Hi, I'm Ken Songer, founder of Songer Audio. I'm coming to you here today from our new listening room in Wilsonville, Oregon, hosted by our friends at Whammerdyne Heavy Industries. And uh, I just wanted to spend a little time talking to you today, introducing you to our field coil driver uh, and the technology behind it. Um, most of you have, uh, have never encountered a field coil driver or haven't had the opportunity uh, to listen to one. And so I just wanted to talk a little bit about what a field coil is and some of the design innovations that we have brought to this older technology, bringing it into the modern era. Um, so the first thing to talk about uh, is what is a field coil? Well, uh, a field coil is just another way of saying an electromagnet. Uh, the first drivers that were, uh, that were ever made were electromagnet driven uh, speaker drivers. Uh, there were no uh, permanent magnets at the time, or at least none that were affordable enough or small enough or lightweight enough to be considered uh, for a loudspeaker driver. And so all loudspeaker drivers uh, were made with electromagnets. In fact, uh, when you think about the old uh, beautiful standing radios of the 20s, 30s, and 40s, the old RCA and Philco radios, uh, they all had two things in them. They had a field coil driver uh, and they had a tube amplifier in them. Um, but eventually, in the 1950s, uh, finally permanent magnets became plentiful and affordable. Uh, and just from a manufacturing standpoint, it didn't make any sense uh, to, con to continue to make uh, field coil drivers and, uh, and permanent magnet uh, drivers all but replaced field coils uh, around the 1950s. Um, but uh, that said, nonetheless, uh, even though recording technology was primitive at the time, uh, the electromagnet it, it was the far superior uh, form of magnetism for sound reproduction. Uh, and so, uh, so these days there's been a, a bit of a renaissance uh, for field coil technology, uh, and we're starting to see more and more uh, field coil loudspeakers in the market. Uh, we're even seeing field coil tone arm cartridges, uh, which, is, which is great to see. So the next thing you might be uh, wondering is, why is a field coil superior to a permanent magnet for sound reproduction? Well, there are a couple of reasons for that. Uh, the first reason is the stiffness of the magnetic field that is generated by a field coil. Um, that is uh, measured in terms of its magnetic permeability. Um, that translates into the ability of this magnet to move the moving mass of the driver to a very specific point in space because of that stiffness, and then return it to a resting state uh, in an equally precise manner. So, uh, so with a ferrite magnet, which has a very low stiffness, uh, it's like a trampoline. And as it tries to move the cones and the moving mass and the voice coil to a specific point in space, it overshoots it like it would with a trampoline. And as it tries to return it, to a resting state, uh, it also overshoots it. And that translates into distortion in musical reproduction. Um, but with an electromagnet, uh, you know, for an Alnico magnet, that measurement of stiffness may be a five or a seven or something like that. Um, but for an electromagnet, if this were measured, it would measure in the thousands. So it is hundreds, if not thousands of times more accurate than any permanent magnet can be. And again, that translates into a uh, very accurate sound stage, very low distortion, um, a much uh, clearer and more coherent presentation of your music. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the design innovations that we've put into this driver. Field coils are a 150 year old technology, um, um, but we've tried to bring that into the modern era and, uh, and do a little bit of, uh, of innovation of our own to improve upon uh, what is already uh, a wonderful technology for a loudspeaker driver. Uh, so starting out with, uh, with what you're looking at here, the main part of the driver, uh, this is a very low carbon steel housing. And inside of that housing uh, is this. So this is just a coil of copper. It's called a solenoid. 
and this one that you're looking at is 1,570 windings of 18 AWG copper wire. And what that does is it generates a magnetic field of 1.7 Tesla. So it is a very strong, strong magnet. Uh, and that allows it to exert a very high degree of control over the moving mass. It's very self-damping. Um, this driver that you're looking at is the most interesting uh, between the two of the drivers we make uh, because it includes a rear firing wizard. We call this our Type D driver and because it includes that rear firing wizard you get truly full range performance in both directions uh, which, is, which is unusual. We think that this uh, rear firing wizard is the only of its kind in the world. Um, the next thing I'd like to talk about is the lightweight mass of this driver. Um, it wouldn't be unusual to see for a 10 inch driver like this, something in the neighborhood of a 30 gram moving mass, maybe even higher than that. Um, this particular driver, the entire moving mass, including the suspension, is only 12.25 grams. It's very, very light and that translates into very high sensitivity for the driver. Um, it's very, very fast, as people say. Um, so uh, when you've got a very light and stiff moving mass, like this curvilinear washi paper cone design that we have, you need a very soft, very compliant suspension in both the spider uh, and in the surrounds in order to maintain that very high fidelity and very high sensitivity in the performance of the driver. So the spider that we have here, you'll see as I move the moving mass up and down, it's very, very soft in the suspension. It is a thermal polyurethane lattice and it holds the entire moving mass in light tension, uh, which allows it to almost float in the gap. Uh, and by the gap, I mean where the voice coil is sitting in that very powerful 1.7 Tesla magnetic field. Uh, this is an underhung design, and that means that the voice coil winding is smaller than the gap uh, depth in the motor itself, as that voice coil is always within the boundaries of that magnetic field rather than having some of the coil sitting outside of the field, which is called an overhung design. Years of research and development into different uh, materials, uh, different shapes of the cone in order to maximize uh, the frequency response uh, of the driver. It's very deep as it meets uh, the former, which allows for great bass response. Uh, however, uh, as it reaches the outer boundaries of the cone, it, it, it progresses all the way to, uh, to a very flat surface. And what that does is it gives it excellent uh, off-axis performance, great treble for performance through the final octave. Uh, the off-axis performance of this driver is outstanding. It doesn't have any of that shout uh, that is so common uh, in loudspeaker designs like this that include a wizard. Uh, the next thing to mention is these lambskin surrounds. These are lightweight, paper-thin uh, lambskin or lamb suede surrounds. Uh, they're excellent in terms of their sonic characteristics. They retain uh, virtually no sonic energy, which is exactly what you want uh, the surround to do in addition to keeping the moving mass nice and centered in that very, very finely uh, that fine tolerance in the gap where the voice coil uh, rests. The last thing that I would like to show you is our phase plug. This phase plug is milled solid aluminum and at its base it has a built-in Faraday ring. And what that Faraday ring is, for those of you who don't know, um, it, it reduces uh, the inductance of the driver. And that reduction in inductance of the driver 
further reduces the distortion and it also allows for excellent performance uh, in the treble range for the driver as the impedance of the driver naturally goes up. Uh, we believe that it is the only truly full range 10 inch driver in the market and, uh, and in room, in cabinet, uh, or in our dipole application with the S2, uh, you can expect outstanding performance from 30 hertz all the way through the final octave. Uh, and as a point source, uh, it doesn't have the inherent timing uh, and phase challenges that every multi-way speaker uh, tends to face because of what's introduced by the crossover, the fact that there are disparate drivers all trying to cover different portions of the frequency range. Uh, those just naturally come with the difficulty of blending the drivers together, of uh, phase and timing issues. Uh, because this is a point source, it's the best that you can do from a phase coherency uh, perspective. Um, that will translate into a lifelike presentation, superb sound stage width and depth. So I'd just like to thank you for, uh, for listening. Um, it's a pleasure to talk to you uh, about this field coil. It's at the heart of what Songer Audio does and why our loudspeakers sound so special. Um, we would love to see you down here in Wilsonville uh, in our new listening room to host you for a listening session. Uh, please feel free to reach out an email uh, or you can reach out to us on the website to schedule a private listening session uh, and we'd love to hear from you.